Hello and welcome to another Python tutorial. So this is going to be the first video where we are going to explore the Python, the PowerPoint object model inside of Python. So we're going to see how to just do the basic things. So if I want to create a reference to a PowerPoint application, how would that look using Python? If I wanted to create a reference to a presentation, to a slide, if I want to make a reference to a collection, if I want to loop through that collection, uh, you know, how would I do that? So we can kind of think of this as being our introduction into how do we use PowerPoint inside of Python. So we're going to keep it really simple. Um, we're not going to go into too much detail, but at least say, hey, this is how we use a method. This is how we use a property. This is how we get references and really the core concepts we need uh, in order to do kind of all the complicated stuff. But before we get started, I'm going to do a little bit of a teaser. Uh, I think you guys will like this one. Oh, I wasn't supposed to highlight it, but it's okay. So as you can tell, I'm in an Excel workbook. Got some numbers over here. Ah, that's interesting. Python multiply and Python sum. So soon, uh, a couple days probably, I am going to be releasing a video that's going to show you how we can create Python functions that we can use inside of an Excel workbook. So the way we can think about it is we are creating our own object library that we can use in VBA that contains Python functions and objects. And so uh, this is really kind of opening the door to a ton of different stuff we can potentially do uh, just because now that we can create different objects, we can do all sorts of interesting stuff that maybe beforehand we couldn't. But Problem is it takes a lot of research and I'm still working on it because for example, I can do a single cell, but when it comes to an array of cells I'm running into sort of a problem, but um, I do have workarounds if worst case scenario does happen, but I don't think it's gonna be worst case scenario. But yeah, just wanna kind of throw that out there. They do work. Uh, in fact, I'll go in my visual basic. It's gonna look something like this where we would create an object, we call the method, and then that is our function and we can also treat them just as regular objects as ourselves. So um, very cool. I'm very excited about that. I think that's going to really kind of open the door to really what we can now do with Python and, uh, you know, just with inside of Office applications naturally. So thought I'd throw it out there. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to go in my Jupyter Notebook. Like every video, we're going to first start off by importing our libraries. Import our libraries. We're going to import win32com clients. And then from here, we need to get our PowerPoint application. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to get the instance of PowerPoint. And we're going to say, hey, I want to be able to reference this PowerPoint instance later in my code. So I'm just going to create a variable that houses it. I'm going to go into win32com, go into the client. I'm going to call the get active object method. This takes one parameter. It's a string, and that is simply the name of our application. And then just for sanity purposes, I do want to make sure that it's returning back something to me. So it's, it's returning something. It's not necessarily the most informative. It's saying none application, so that doesn't really tell me a lot. But at least it's saying, hey, we do have an application. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, let's just say we had this PowerPoint application and maybe we want to get some properties about it. So properties are the items that describe our particular object. So we can think of them as the attributes. Um, at least that's how I like to do it. And what we'll do is we'll put a cell below. And then from here, what we'll say is we'll print out the PPT app. There is a property called operating system. You can probably guess what this returns. It's simply the name of the operating system that you're currently using PowerPoint in. And I am using Windows 64-bit 10. Um, technically, if you're using the Win32.com library, you have to be on Windows. So uh, it would be shocking if it was anything else. If it's anything else, please let me know. That'd be interesting. Okay, and then from here, maybe we want to get uh, the path to our particular application. So we would call the path property. And so this returns back again, a string that is a file path that uh, basically tells us where this particular application lives. 
And then if we wanted to, there's something called the product code property. This returns a GUID. This is a unique key that is unique to every application on your Windows system. Uh, and this is how we kind of identify our particular um, application. In fact, when we go and create Python functions and we want to create our own object library, we have to give it a GUI ID. Um, so that's the way that Microsoft is going to, you know, basically put it in the system. And then when we need to reference it, um, it's using that ID for us. So a little bit of a heads up. Okay, so now that we've uh, referenced an application, let's move on to the next logical step presentation, right? So again, just like in VBA, we had this hierarchy, application, presentation, slides, and then shapes. Uh, that's basically what we're doing here. At that next level of the hierarchy, we've got a presentation. If we want to access a presentation, we go into our PPT app, we go into the presentations collection, and then we have two options of how we can get a particular application. We can pass through an index, uh, the index is determined by the order in which the, uh, uh, the presentations were open. So if it was the first one open, it has an index of one. Um, if it was the second one open, it has an index of two. Or if we wanted to as well, we could pass through the name of our presentation. So for example, the one I'm working out of is called Excel to PowerPoint. And then we have to make sure that we put the extension at the end. And then if you ever want, your name is right up here. It's pretty... Um, easy to find. And then if you wanted to, again, for sanity purposes, you can tell that you now have a reference to an object. It doesn't tell you what that object is, unfortunately, but it is there. Now, there is a way where we can make it a little bit more, I guess, intelligent. Uh, that's for another video because there's just some stuff that I kind of have to work out first and I want to make sure that I give you guys the right information before I start telling you about it. But there technically is a way where we can get some more detailed information about the actual object itself. So it does come in handy. Okay, so here what we did is we created a reference to a PowerPoint presentation object. Okay, so now that we have that particular object, again, let's just print out some basic information about it. So we will put the name we will put the path of the object. And then uh, we can also, if we, well, I'll just do this one first. There's the name of our application. There is the path of our application. So I will say properties of our PPT pres object. Now, obviously there's more than the two I just put down there. And then we'll say methods of our PPT pres object. So if I want to access a method, I would go into the object and then call the method and then put my little brackets. And so this one will save my particular PowerPoint presentation. Now nothing happened, but it did save it for me. So if it's a method, it's got the little brackets. If it's a property, it's just simply the name of the property. So very important you keep those uh, two distinguish because they will kind of throw you off a little bit. Now inside of our presentation object, uh, there's a collection, there's different types of collections, obviously, uh, you know, just like our application had a presentations collection, our presentation object also has its own collections. Now, the particular collection that I'm going to be working with is the fonts collection. So I'll say working with the fonts collection. These are all the fonts that currently are in your presentation. Normally it's just one, but you can't have more. So we'll say for font in the PPT pres dot fonts collection. And what we're going to do is we're going to print the font name. We will print the font size and then we will print the font, whether it's italic or not. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm looping through each object in that collection, and then for each one of those objects, I'm printing the associated properties. Now, in this example, there's only one font, so it's just gonna do one loop, but if you had more than one, this is how you loop through a collection. Trust me, we'll do more of this, I promise. 
Now, what it did is it returned back the name of the font, the size of the font. I don't know why it gave negative two. That doesn't make any sense to me. And then it also gave us back italic. And so it said zero. So I'm believing that is saying, hey, it's not italic because it's not on. Okay, so that's looping through a particular collection. We'll move on to the next level. I just gotta move my notes. So at the next level, we have a slide. So let's create a reference to a slide. Just like with the presentations collection, just like with the, well, with application doesn't really make sense, but with the slides, it's basically like the presentations collection. You have an index method and you have a key method. The key method is you pass through the name of your particular slide. With the index method, it is the order in which they appear in the presentation. So to demonstrate, let's say we have PPT slide one, that equals PPT pres. We'll go into the slides collection. I want the first slide. And then I'm gonna create another slide object. Again, go into the slides collection. With this one, I'm gonna pass through the name. And this one will be slide two. And then if I want, what I can do is I can say, hey, print PPT slide one dot name, and then I'll copy this, and then I'll print two. So I get slide one and slide two. So that's how we access an individual slide. If we wanted to, we could also loop through all the slides. So if we wanted to loop through all of the slides, in our presentation, it would look like this. For PPT slide in PPT pres dot slides, put my colon, and then we'll just, again, print out some basic information. So I'll say PPT slide dot name. I can also count the number of shapes that are on that slide. So I'll do shapes. So I'll go into the shapes collection and then call the count property. If I wanted to, I could get the slide ID. See what this one gives us. So we get slide one. There's one shape. This is the slide ID. Slide two, one shape, slide ID, and so on and so on. And that looks right. I mean, I got four slides. Each one of them has four shapes. And then there's a slide ID that's in the background that we can't see. Okay, so now that we have a slide, let's get an individual shape on that particular slide, right? Now I'm gonna comment this out. And again, we'll kind of show one particular way of doing it. So if I wanted to create a reference to a shape, we will call it PPT shape one. And then this one will be uh, PPT slide one, we'll go into the shapes collection and then I'll get the first shape. And then if I want, I can do shape one dot name, it's object one. Now, if I want another shape, what I can do, so I'll put this here, put that as shape two, I'll go on to my second slide and then this one, uh, we'll put in object one. Uh, this is kind of where people get a little bit thrown off. They would think, oh, it's object two. It's object one for that particular slide. So it's very important you keep that in mind. It's not going to keep incrementing like a slide does. Um, each slide can have multiple shapes. So it starts incrementing again as you're on a new slide. Now you can technically change the name if you wanted to, but there's really no point. Okay, so now that we have a reference to a shape, I'm gonna snap this over here. I'm gonna go here and I am on slide two. I am going to, where is it? I want to, oh, I guess that's kind of doing it. Okay, we'll stay on slide two. Let's manipulate our shape by, you know, setting the height and the width and then aligning it. Now. When it comes to manipulating shapes, I prefer that they're in a shape range because with the shape range, they have some built-in methods that make aligning it a little bit easier than if it was just working with each individual shape. 
Otherwise, we'd have to calculate a bunch of different stuff, and I just I don't want to do that. I think that's just making the problem more complicated than it has to be. So what we'll do is we'll first select the shape, and then we'll take that selection and store it into a shape range object. And so first thing we want to do is reference our shape, call the select method. So this one's just simply select the shape. And what it should do, make sure to put a two. We have now selected our shape. And what we'll do is we'll put that shape into a shape range. So put the selection into a shape range object. We'll call our variable shape range. We'll go into the PPT app. We'll go into the active window. We'll go into the selection property of that active window. And then we'll go into the shape range property of that selection. We will print out our shape range. Okay, so we have a, a shape range, we've selected it. And now what we can do is we can set the dimensions of our shape range. And so what we'll do is we'll call the shape range object. We'll put the height property equal to 400, shape range, we'll put the width equal to 400. If I run it, we can see that it jumped it, made it a little bit bigger. Now, normally what I would wanna do maybe is I wanna align it, for example. So if I wanna align it to the center and to the middle of my particular uh, PowerPoint slide, what I can do is I can call the shape range object, call the align method, and then with this one, we can put in the different enumerations. Uh, one is for the center, I believe. And then one is relative to the slide. You can, with a shape range, you can technically have it relative to different objects if you have multiple shapes selected. Um, so that's basically how you would do it in VBA. Now we only have a single one, so I'm just gonna have it relative to the slide. So this one puts it to the center of my slide, just like I was expecting. But you know what, I also want it to the middle. So I'll call the align method again. And then this one, I will put a four to say, hey, specify to the middle of my slide. And there we go, puts it to the middle. And then again, just for demonstration purposes, just keep messing around with it and then, you know, see basically what it does. We'll put 200. And then we can tell that it's aligning that particular shape. And the cool thing is we're doing this all real time. I mean, that's, like I said, that's the cool thing about this library. I'm controlling PowerPoint from Python real time. That's not cool. I don't know what is. Well, I'm sure there's other cool things, but I think it's cool. Um, but with that being said, that does it for today's video. Uh, you know, hopefully you found it informative and kind of an introduction to working with PowerPoint inside of Python. If you have any questions, please make sure to put them down in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you. Also, if you could make sure to like the video, we appreciate the support. We wanna make sure other people can find it. People really seem to like this whole controlling the VBA object models from Python. So um, people seem to really enjoy it. I wanna make sure they can find it and things along like that nature because I think ideally, hopefully it makes their lives easier. That's the ultimate goal of this. And then obviously bring some new functionality maybe to their applications they weren't expecting. And then also, if you're not already, make sure to stay, well, stay, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos. So obviously we're gonna start coming out with the whole Python function ones inside of Excel. I think that's gonna be super cool. So you definitely wanna stay on top of that one as we release it. And then I also know people were asking about putting the code on GitHub or something like that. I am in the process of uploading it. It's just taking some time. And then I'm also in the process of working on a website where you will basically find these tutorials just a little bit more detailed and then the code that goes along with it. So it's just a lot to kind of get that all together. And I'm a perfectionist, unfortunately. So it's like fonts are out of place or something like that. It drives me crazy. Um, but it's coming along. It's almost done. So, you know, that will be up before you know it. So thanks again for watching, guys. We will see you in the next video.